Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis game dev tutorial. In the previous lesson we learned how to do various different transparency effects using things such as a sprite flicker and meshes and so on and in the lesson before that we learned how to use shadow and highlight mode on the sprites to produce some uh, black and white transparencies. In this lesson we're back to using shadow and highlight mode again, this time to do the transparencies on the background layers. One of the most famous examples of this technique in action is this particular level of Ranger X here. And after studying today's lesson you'll be able to achieve this yourself in your own games. Another very well known example of background tile based shadow and highlight mode is this section of Castlevania Bloodlines. Later on in 2024 we will be learning how to do some line scrolling effects and using that in combination with today's lesson here you will have the skills to produce a similar effect. Ok so this will be our starting point for this lesson and we have the Ranger X sprite here, the robot from Ranger X because after all we're reproducing a similar effect here. As for the background, I'm sure most of you Mega Drive fans recognise what it is, is of course from the Revenge of Shinobi. Of course this is much more simplified from the Revenge of Shinobi game itself, but what I liked about this particular scene was the fact it has all these light sources. Anyone who's been following my GG Shinobi developer's diary will know that I've been messing about with a potential future uh, Revenge of Shinobi remake for the Sega Saturn. Now transparencies on the Saturn are a whole other subject and they have their own limitations but obviously they're much more advanced than the Mega Drive and doing a Saturn version of this I thought it would be nice if some of these lights could have some uh, lighting and transparency effects but thinking about it actually the Mega Drive, even the good old Mega Drive can produce some I think nice effects here and that's what we're going to do today. As usual any Patreon supporters can go over there and download the completed source code for today's tutorial. Everyone else I will go through the starting code very quickly so we know where we're at. In the starting build we have a foreground against a parrot scrolling background and for today's lesson I'll definitely recommend that you make sure that the width isn't any greater than 512 and the height is no greater than 256. We're going to be adding some extra sprites apart from the player sprite and if this big if the map's larger than that you can have some strange effects with how the sprites display but don't worry we'll talk about that further in a future episode. So we have a regular background image assigned to PAL 0 and then PAL 1 is assigned to the foreground. Since we're going to using shadow and highlight mode you're going to have to make sure that the priorities are set to force. So we have the regular VDP draw image X to display the background and then we have a, um, a foreground using the 16 tile tool. So we don't have to use the um, tile extra full. Um, brackets we just use index instead and of course the foreground layer is assigned to BGA layer whereas the background is BGB. We're also going to scroll the map and set the scrolling mode for the background as well. Here is the code where we create our player sprite and you can see here is set to PAL2 and the priority level is false and of course we also need to um, turn on shadow and highlights mode too. And as we scroll down you'll see the functions for the controls and the uh, camera and the map and so on and if any of this is confusing to you we have covered this in previous lessons so go back and watch the previous lessons and you should understand everything fine. Let's now take a look at the foreground map that I created earlier in 16 tiles. So here is the tile set and it's a simplified Revenge of Shinobi tile set here. In the map itself you can see that I have assigned all the tiles to PAL1 because we're going to be using the um, PAL1 for the foreground. We're going to change this later but for now the priority of everything is set to low priority so it's set to force so all the tiles within this are low priority. And if we take another look at our starting ROM you can see that all the background and the foreground and the sprite itself are all dark because they're all low priority. Let's begin to change that now, so under the priority um, layer in 16 tile we're going to paint the um, tiles under that first light as high priority. After updating our ROM with this new foreground you can see that the light now has a highlight underneath it, so it's highlighting both the background as well as our player sprite. If you pay very close attention to the sprite as it goes under and past the lamp you may notice that there's one particular colour which the shadow and highlight mode doesn't seem to affect and that is the little red dot. If we take a closer look at our player sprite here you can see that I've added this red dot which wasn't in the original and I've assigned it to the 15th position of that palette. The pink one at the end is just the next one I added that doesn't exist in the original game just to fit out the um, 16 colours. So for shadow and highlight mode, for the background based shadow and highlight mode, 
the 15th color in the palette of any sprite and that can be doesn't matter which palette you're using pal 0 1 2 or 3 it would always be not affected by the shadow and highlight so you have to really take that into account when designing your player sprites if you're going to have shadow and highlight applied to them either you get three options either you can just avoid the 15th color altogether so that's not a problem but that's kind of a wasted color uh, secondly you can just kind of ignore it so as long as that particular color doesn't make up too much of the sprite it probably won't be noticeable to m most players as is probably the case here with this single dot the third thing is actually to uh, to implement that into the design of the sprite itself so for example if you have the eyes or lights on a robot or the eyes of some kind of demon you might want them to shine bright even under the shadow so it might be good to incorporate this you could call it like a, a hardware bug into your sprite design another thing you may have noticed as you watch this footage is the fact that our player sprite is affected by the highlight effect whereas in ranger x the game itself it's not it's always bright you can see as i open up the light here it doesn't make any difference to the brightness of the sprite we can reproduce this effect exactly in our little ROM here by simply changing the priority of the um, Ranger X robot from false to true. And after saving and compiling, you'll see that we get this effect here where the sprite is always bright, no matter whether it's um, underneath the highlighted section of the foreground or outside of it. If I were to have to guess the intentions of the developers for Ranger X as to why they chose to leave the player sprite as high priority, I would say that it's probably because they thought maybe if the player sprite were low priority and dark most of the time, it might affect the gameplay. Maybe the players wouldn't be able to see where the player sprite is. So it's kind of more of a, a game design decision rather than a hardware limitation. For me personally, I would have preferred if they left the um, player sprite and all the enemy sprites and everything else as low priority. And I think that would make a better looking effect. But um, hopefully at some point, someone would do maybe a ROM hack where they can change this. It's just changing the priority of the sprites that should be pretty straightforward going back to our code let's change the uh, player priority the player sprite priority back to force and then recompile and now we're going to go ahead and do the other light sources in our little foreground so back in 16 tile again we're going to paint the priority now against this black background you can't actually see uh, which tiles very clearly which tiles have been painted as high priority and full and low priority but if i continue to i'm left clicking on this but if we go down to the ones just below and then left click you can see that it's definitely working so there's right click to get rid of those there so uh, trust me they are high priority now those um, tiles under the light and if we go to the next light source you can see it's a lot more clear here which is high priority and which is low priority once we swap out the foregrounds in our ROM and we recompile, we'll have this effect. So <laughs> you can see there's a bit of a problem when we go under the second light source here. And that's because the priority level, when we set high or low priority, is doing two jobs at once, as I mentioned, I think, in the previous lessons. And it's doing the which, um, whether the sprite, which backgrounds or which sprite layer appears in front of which. And it's also doing the job of uh, doing the shadow or highlights. So you can see because we're having uh, we're putting higher priority on these this kind of bin here and this part of the wall and the the fact that the player sprite is is low priority it means that the that part of the foreground will appear in front of the player those of you who watched the tutorial last year on having some parts of the foreground appear in front of the players and others behind may recall that we use a similar technique to make sure that mickey appeared behind this trunk and in front of all the other elements of the foreground. Keep in mind that under normal circumstances, any sprite will appear in front of the foreground layer unless you make that sprite low priority and make certain parts of the foreground high priority, in which case the fog, those high priority tiles of the foreground will appear in front. One obvious way to solve this would be to make the sprites higher priority, but then of course, just as in the example of Ranger X, it would mean that the um, shadow and highlight effect would not take effect on that particular sprite. As is always the case with these old consoles with their hardware limitations, often those limitations will spark some creativity. And luckily I have a way that we can actually achieve our effect while having the shadow and highlight effect appear on both the foreground and also the player sprite too. The solution will be to take those problematic foreground elements and simply replace them with low priority sprites. So first of all in 16 tile we're going to pretty much delete those offending areas. So we're going to paste this um, the transparent tile here so it will pretty much slow, slow straight through to the background rather than any foreground elements so remember these are still highlighted 
and after updating our ROM we should get this effect so the highlight uh, part is working fine now but of course we're now missing the foreground element so you can see straight through to the background. This is precisely where our low priority background sprites come in because we're going to pretty much replicate the graphics of the foreground that we need to uh, represent the foreground as well as have the highlights effect and we're going to copy it and we're going to uh, put the sprites where the foreground used to be and as you can see we're doing that with the back wall and the right hand side of the bin. Going back to our code you can see I've added the two sprites into resources and I've also put together the relevant code in main.c to add the sprites themselves. Remember that the order in which you upload the sprites will affect where they appear in the sprite table and that will affect which sprites appear in front of which. So we're going to want to make sure that the player sprite appears in front of both the wall and the bin sprite. So make sure the ranger sprite uh, is uploaded first and then the wall and the bin afterwards. And of course the wall and the bin sprite they're both using PAL1 which is the same palette as the foreground layer. And finally don't forget to update the um, position of the sprites on the map within the camera function. After saving and compiling and looking at the new ROM you can see that our problem has now been solved. So the we have you know, the black background for the wall while also having the highlight effect take place in front of the player because remember we're replacing a sprite and if we look at the right side of the bin here too we can see that we're having the same effect so remember the right hand side of the bin and the player are both two sprites and as such they're, they're going to be the low priority sprites and they're being affected by the shadow and highlight background tiles. Back in our code, just to highlight something I mentioned before, if we were to make it so that the ranger sprite was added after the wall and the bin and save and compile, we'll get this result. And you can see that the player sprite appears below the bin because due to their order in the sprite table, which is affected by which order you upload the sprite. So definitely don't want to do that. Make sure that the ranger is um, uploaded first and we'll get our normal result. Okay, so to recap, the background base shadow and highlight mode is very, very useful because unlike the sprite base one, it means that you can apply transparencies both to the background behind it as well as all sprites on the screen too. However, it does have its limitations, just like the um, sprite base shadow and highlight mode, it can only do the um, dark or light, it can't do any other different colors, it's pretty much just black or white. Um, transparencies. Also as we have seen the way that the um, highlight mode is activated is using the priority tile so that can cause some problems as we've seen if you want to put some foreground graphics as well as the shadow and highlight effect. Although we managed to found a little um, hack past this by using some background sprites but remember you have to be very careful because you can only have 80 back hardware sprites on the screen at the same time before you start to experience some sprite, sprite flicker and you're going to have to have enemies as well as the player maybe but it's and other sprites on the screen so you have to use this in a very conservative way but so long as you do then I think it can be a very effective technique. And finally, due to the fact that the um, shadow or highlight effect is applied on a per tile basis, it means you can't choose any shape you want. It has to be a series of 8x8 tiles. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you wish to support the channel further and want to get extra things, for example, the code for each lesson, then I have a patron and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time, farewell.